Welcome back to Bad Things in History, where we help you feel like a better person by bringing you humanity's worst. When a loving family adopts children, we usually consider that to be a good thing. But in the not-so-distant past, one woman used her position to take infants from their mothers. Then she sold them to adoptive parents all over the country. Why did she do this, and could it happen again? Today we are going to tell you the story of Georgia Tan, a social worker who abused her position for profit. The Beginning Georgia Tan was born on July 18, 1891, in Philadelphia, Mississippi. For most of her early life, she lived in Hickory, Mississippi. Although her family wasn't wealthy, they certainly weren't poor. Georgia's mother was a school teacher. Her father had been a lawyer who went on to become a judge. Georgia's father also had a soft spot for children that had been abandoned. He would sometimes bring them into the family home and care for them until they could be placed elsewhere. Georgia's parents were optimistic for their talented daughter. Her father dreamed of Georgia becoming a concert pianist, so he started sending her to piano lessons at a young age. She attended college in Virginia for several years. Georgia graduated with a music degree in 1913, but she hated playing the piano and didn't want to be a professional musician. First, she went to New York for two summers and took courses in social work. But then she decided to become a lawyer like her father. She returned to Mississippi and passed the bar exam. Georgia's father didn't want her to work in law, though it wasn't a profession suited to women. Since Georgia had no desire to get married or have children, she chose the only other career that made sense. She decided to become a social worker. Helping Orphans Georgia Tan began her career as a social worker in Texas. She didn't stay there long and returned to Mississippi. She found employment as receiving director for the Mississippi Children's Home Society. Although Georgia never married, she did adopt a daughter in 1922. She also started a relationship with a woman named Anne Atwood. Those in charge of the children's home didn't seem to care about the relationship with Anne, but they did begin to question Georgia's methods for acquiring children. They thought that her approach was problematic where consent was concerned. Georgia had problems following the rules, and in 1922, she was fired. She moved to Memphis and brought Anne with her. The couple began living together, but kept the details of their relationship secret. In 1922, Georgia Tan began working for the Tennessee Children's Home Society. She used aggressive political tactics to advance quickly within the organization. By 1924, she was executive secretary of the society. Now that she had the power to make decisions, Georgia could do what she always wanted. She could sell children to the highest bidder. Stealing Children Georgia Tan discovered that wealthy people in other states would pay handsomely to adopt children. She just had to keep enough supply to meet the ever-growing demand. Most of the infants she placed into adoptive homes went to New York or California. In a single 10-year period, she placed 2,000 children in just these two states. To make it worth her while, Georgia only dealt with wealthy families. They were offering to pay the highest possible price for new additions to the household. Acquiring enough children to sell was a difficult task for Georgia. She had to use a variety of methods to separate infants from their mothers. If a woman gave birth in a mental institution, then Georgia could use her authority to take the child. If a young woman was a ward of the state, Georgia's power allowed her to claim that child as well. Sending children to families all over the United States was becoming big business, so... Georgia had to use other tactics to increase her collection of homeless toddlers. 
Single mothers in Tennessee usually had to work, even in the 1930s and 1940s. Many of them would drop their children at a nursery school for the day. Some of the mothers returned in the evening to find that their offspring were gone. The mothers were told that welfare agents from the state claimed the children. If a woman was unmarried and gave birth in a hospital, Georgia was able to make use of that situation as well. She would tell the mother that the infant needed medical care. Then the baby was taken away and would never see its mother again. If there was an illness in the family that affected one or more parents, Georgia had a way to exploit that situation too. She would have welfare agents take children from the home. Then, as quickly as possible, she would make sure they were placed into new families. When a woman who had her child taken finally found Georgia Tan, Georgia might tell them that their offspring was dead. Sometimes the mothers would be informed that the child had been adopted and there was no record of where it went. None of them were able to retrieve the sons and daughters they lost. When potential parents were thinking about adopting a child, Georgia would usually lie to make the prospect seem more attractive. After adopting, some of these families did their own research and discovered the truth, but when Georgia was confronted, she would threaten to take the child as retaliation. The angry parents would always back down rather than risk destroying their new family. This devious strategy for stealing children and selling them was working very well. Celebrities would soon find the situation worked to their advantage. The Rich and Famous Georgia Tan helped several famous people adopt children, and some of those she placed into new homes became famous as well. In 1947, she provided two children to actress Joan Crawford. One of Joan's other children, Christina Crawford, would later author a book called Mommy Dearest. It exposed Joan Crawford as an abusive parent. June Allison was a famous actress that became well known in the 1940s. Later in life, she would also appear in advertisements for Depends Undergarments. On August 19, 1945, June married Dick Powell, another famous actor in the 1940s. In 1948, the couple adopted a child given to them by Georgia Tan. Herbert Lehman became the 45th governor of New York on January 1, 1933. As a child, he was taken by Georgia Tan and placed with a new family. The famous wrestler Rick Flair, as an infant, was also placed by Georgia Tan's agency. He was given to a new family in 1949. Some of the orphans that Georgia placed into new homes did have a much better life than they would have experienced with their birth parents. Famous people who adopted children also helped to make the practice become more accepted in society. But most children who found their way into Georgia Tan's care were not so fortunate. Going out of business. Georgia had a strict process for handling minors that became her responsibility. First, she had to bring the children into a group home with other orphans. If the new child was sick, Georgia Tan would usually just neglect it. Doctors would give Georgia medicine and explain how to treat the sick infant but it was usually cheaper and more efficient to just let the sick children die. When a wealthy family wanted to adopt, Georgia first destroyed any records of the orphaned child. Then she failed to do any background checks on the adoptive family. Once the transaction was complete, the birth parents had no hope of seeing their child again. Finding new homes for stolen children was demanding work, so Georgia had to hire help. Two women worked for Georgia Tan and helped move babies around the country. Once every few weeks, one of the women would go to New York and the other would go to California. Each of them would have about six babies with them. Over the course of several days, they met with families and sold the children. Occasionally, somebody would attempt to take Georgia to court. She had a plan for that as well. The Memphis family court judge was Camille Kelly. 
She was a friend of George's and may have received bribes, too. Families that entered Camille's courtroom usually had their children taken away. After nearly 26 years of stealing children, Georgia Tan's scheme finally reached an end. Gordon Browning became governor of Tennessee in 1949. Over the next year, he started receiving reports that Georgia was selling children. He ordered an investigation on September 11, 1950. One of the reports sent to Governor Browning said, While the financial transactions of Miss Tan were shocking enough, other facts came to our attention which disturbed us even more. We found that on many occasions babies had been taken from their mothers at the hospital when only a few hours old and placed in nursing homes in and about Memphis, where they were without medical care. Many of those children died. Not only that, but the children placed in the Memphis home itself were not properly cared for and many children died while there as a direct result of violations of physicians' orders. Doctors would prescribe formulas and medicines which were completely disregarded on orders from the director of the Memphis home. The report also stated that Georgia had stolen over 5,000 children. New York and California swore to take action. The state of Tennessee also planned to prosecute. They were too late. On September 15, 1950, Georgia died of uterine cancer. Judge Camille Kelly was not prosecuted for her role in the scheme, but she did resign. Nobody was ever punished for these crimes. The children that were sold into adoptive families remained there. Decades later, one lucky mother would see her daughter again. Lost and Found In early 1946, Alma Sippel moved to Memphis. She was in her early 20s and had just given birth to a daughter named Irma. Alma's boyfriend, who was Irma's father, was in the military. He was stationed in Panama. They planned to be married as soon as he returned. About six weeks after moving into her new apartment, Alma answered a knock on her door. Standing there was Georgia Tan. She began asking questions about a neighbor, saying that it was a child abuse investigation. Georgia looked at Irma, who had a runny nose. Then she looked at Alma and said, Your baby's sick, isn't she? You should get her a checkup. Georgia then offered to take her to the children's hospital. Alma agreed, thankful that Georgia was willing to help. The next day, Alma went to the hospital and saw Irma there, but the nurses wouldn't let her near the child. They told Alma all the children in the hospital belonged to the children's home. A few days later, Georgia called Alma to inform her that Irma was dead. Supposedly, she caught pneumonia in the hospital and died. Alma never did get answers. All she knew is that her daughter was gone. Alma finally moved on with her life, finding a new husband and having more children. On December 13, 1989, she was watching an episode of the television show Unsolved Mysteries. They discussed Georgia Tan and how she stole children. Alma recognized the picture. She called a volunteer agency that was trying to help reunite families. They found Irma and gave the details to Alma. The mother and daughter were finally reunited in 1990. For over a quarter century, Georgia Tan helped traffic over 5,000 children. At least 19 of them died from abuse. And since records were being destroyed, it's possible there are many additional victims nobody knows about. Georgia's business was also very profitable. Her total earnings would be worth almost $12 million today. Ultimately, she was never held accountable for her crimes. Those that helped her didn't serve a day in jail, and the families that purchased children were allowed to keep them. What do you think about this terrible tale? Could it happen again today? If you found this episode interesting, please like this video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. 
If you want to keep the horrible history coming, then you should think about becoming a patron. We also have merchandise on our website. Links are in the video description if you're interested. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History.